I can't think of any more really great lingo. She's going to bring down the mainframe. There you go. Enhance. <laughs> There's an asteroid headed to Earth. You have to hack it. <laughs> oh, I forgot to do the other thing. You guys uh, have a little chat real quick. Okay. Hi, dude. Now, How chat. You doing? Thank you. You're looking well. Thank you. I didn't forget to do what I was wrong. How's Tammy? She's good. She just came back from a drum circle. From a drum circle? <laughs> Did she play drums? No, no, it's for uh, at her school for a uh, kid, the music school. So they... Okay. Can Wait, did you she get teach any music? louder? No. No. <laughs> Are you saying to me? <laughs> who's the quietest? What, who's the quietest? Oh, I'm sorry, Christopher. You're the quietest. Let's see. That's where the audio is coming from? You're hearing this tapping? Yes. yes. Yeah. That's the problem. How about now? Oh, Ooh, yeah. Oh, perfect. That's yeah. the velvet fog we've been hoping for. I didn't for. realize it was uh, still rowdy. So it's sending my nice microphone to you. That's why it sounds better. I thought it was a lot. There we go. Huzzah. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh. Oh, slurping it in. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, let's do a quick applause. We're all and assholes. Okay. Okay. <gasps> Woo! Ow! What's going on, guys? It's On Fire Tonight with Josh and Tressa. We are joined once again by our kingdom correspondent, Christopher Pravdika. Howdy. Yay, everybody. Applaud. Thank you. Okay, fine, whatever. Fuck you guys. <laughs> uh, Christopher will put in the studio applause. It'll be great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so we're here to talk about Kingdom Season 1, Episode 2. So anyone who hasn't seen the episode yet, stop this podcast, watch it, come back, and now we're going to spoil everything with great impunity. Glad you're back. Good to see you. <laughs> uh, uh, you don't sound sincere at all. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> hey, you know what? I should have watched the first episode again because I was uh, pretty lost for quite a while. So we'll let you guys start off. How's this show start off? I forget. What's this episode about? What's going on? Um. Okay, so at the beginning of the episode... Crown Prince Chang and his like lieutenant Mu Yang Mu Yang Mu Yang Mu Yang uh, are hanging out by a campfire. The prince like can't eat more of the same food, and Mu Yang is like <laughs> lomless, his lomless bread is stale. <laughs> Mu Yang lives to eat. Like he loves yeah. his pregnant wife, yeah. and after that, food is his greatest pleasure. And he's just like a good, solid dude. Yeah, they're on the road looking for the doctor because they they want to find out what happened to the king, and they found the missing page. So they're, that where we left in the last episode is they're on they're in the wilds looking for this doctor. Right, they're at a campfire right now. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the king has a mysterious ailment or maybe he's died or like, there's just all these questions surrounding him. There's court intrigue at the palace, the Heiwan Cho clan, who are like the most powerful clan in the country are trying to seize the government essentially like, yeah, the, like everyone is loyal to the king. As long as They're the king is dickheads. alive. The king's young bride is a daughter of the Heiwan Cho clan and his top advisor. And totally pregnant. Right. She's like, she's three years pregnant. Right, right. She's doing about a month because usually back then they were pregnant for three years and a month. Go ahead. And my baby's a werewolf. <laughs> it's going to be a That's werewolf. Right. <laughs> oh! <laughs> 
That's all right. Um. Yeah. So. So we pick up with uh, Prince Chang and Mu Yong, and they're like kind of bros. Like, <laughs> like the prince yeah. is making jokes about annihilating his family, which Mu Yong takes completely seriously. Right. It's like, bro, not cool. Yeah. That's my family. Yeah. Read the but book. and the prince yes. is like, come on, man. Like, you're my lieutenant. You can't be cowardly. Like, tough it up. Yeah, don't be a like bitch. I'm. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> and then he does a callback like two hours later, bro. <laughs> come on, let it rest for a minute and then bring it back. Come on. Yes, yeah. he's committing to the bit. Mm-hmm. So they encounter an eerie silence. They see a house in the distance. It's the infirmary they get close there's like all these stakes covered in blood and the door is locked and Mu Yong climbs over the wall the whole place like he lets a, he lets the prince in the whole place is fortified with bloody stakes everywhere inside they're just they're like hey let's go explore this looks like a super fun place to just like poke around in I mean didn't you ever <laughs> like go into like abandoned buildings when you were a kid that were covered in blood, no. <laughs> the, and the spikes are pointed uh, inward. Right. 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 It's Bruh. not just to defend uh, from uh, attackers attacking the fortified infirmary. It's stakes inside, pointing inside. Everywhere. So they're looking around. They step on an old board that breaks the prince trips and they discover under the floorboards just a ton of dead bodies. Cut to they've got local soldiers on the scene immediately, like from nearby, uh, and they're pulling all those bodies out. That was really great. Yeah, it was like the guy's is like... It was! It, that's exactly what it was. Because the one soldier's pulling on one set of legs and all these other soldiers are pulling down and it's fully a big knot of corpses. It was gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they look really like dead people. Yeah, they look yeah, fucking they're gross. All yeah. Disgusting. Black skin. Like it's all ne dry, necrotized. Yeah, they look real dry. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, like, corpses. what about the doctor? Like, is Dr. Yisan here? Is he alive? Like, his he wasn't body's one not of the corpses. For... Right. We cut to uh, some village or something, and there's people feasting because the new governor has just yeah. been whatever or something. The luckiest guy in Korea. Yeah, this <laughs> dude is maybe my favorite character in the whole show. <laughs> He's great. He's like just this dumb lucky idiot who's been appointed for his very first day as magistrate and so there's like a celebration mind you there's like basically famine across the country these guys are getting shit faced in the middle of the day they're just throwing food like you see the guard look down <laughs> at the food and like lick his lips like fuck he I want to eat that <laughs> there's a tightrope walker for no reason <laughs> that the party shot is great the, the tightrope yeah. walker bouncing you don't know, like how is it they have trampolines back then. <laughs> right <laughs> and then the pull back and you see the slack line pretty cool I love that at this like magistrate's like you know, welcome party. There's already a dude with his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's the level we enter this party at. It's it, they're four a.m. drunk at yeah. noon. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a party till someone's got their shirt off. Come on, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> it really. Some guy suck comes running. It sucks What's to that? Receive really bad news when you're that drunk. It does. It's a horrible. <laughs> oh horrible God! Thing. Right, like get it the fuck together. Yeah. Oh shit! I, I don't even know where my office is yet. Like, <laughs> and if I did, I wouldn't be able to find it right now. I am drunk. 
Yeah, because the guy comes running in, flailing his arms. That was the most anime run I've ever seen in my life, in real life. He's flailing and screaming. He's got bad news. Yeah, that's what There's corpses everywhere. Yep, yep. And uh, there's a report that there's, like, yeah. some guy using identification from a soldier that died three years ago. And it's like, oh, that guy sounds suspicious. We better track him down. <laughs> right now. So, like, that's all they've got to go on are these two facts. There's just a ton of corpses and a mysterious person using uh, the identification of this dead soldier. They're talking about our, our soldier slash hunter dude from episode one. That's Young Shin. And he's like a total badass. He's the one that yeah. caused all this trouble. They, there's like cops walking through. I don't even know where anyone is anymore. God damn it! But like the prince and Mu Yang, I don't. Uh, they're like walking through, and there's a police guy, right? And or is it a soldier? And he sees the prince sitting down. And he like unfolds his little drawing of the prince. He's like, and. In the, and Mu Young's like, uh, no, 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 here's his ID, this thing with the tassel on it. This is totally, you're, it's fine. Keep right, moving. Like that's, it's fine. That's the kind of seal that you'd have back then. Like, tag. People were idiots back then. <laughs> nice idea. It doesn't even have a picture of him. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've forged documents. I had to go to a calligrapher, a wood burner. <laughs> um, so there's we, a scene like right after that where there's soldiers I think yeah these are all members of the, the Heiwan Cho clan like they're soldiers okay. of the Heiwan Cho clan okay. they divide into three parties to go in different directions to search for the crown prince and bring him to their justice because you know they they have this theory, this conspiracy theory going that he is conspiring against the king. That's how they're, that's part of how they're trying to like consolidate power. Amen. Oh, and th there's another scene. It's very brief. We see a rowboat dead bodies in shrouds are being weighted down and dumped in a lake. We see the dead body dumped in a lake, and then we see underwater photography. There are a lot of dead bodies weighted down at the bottom of that lake. That's what I was just talking about. Are those part of all those corpses they found, or are these different corpses? Those Do we are know different corpses. Them? That's like... That is elsewhere. What? We'll, we'll find about wow. we'll find out about that. Yeah. T to come. To come. Definitely feels like someone's feet are going to be dangling in that water at some point. Uh. Ooh. Uh. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to mute a lot because mm, pickles just woke up. Miss but you guys pickles. continue, please. Is pickles okay? For the audience at home, Tressa nodded, yes, Pickles is okay. Um, okay, so then the next thing we see, the Heiwan Cho clan, uh, they like try to talk the scholars into handing over the covenant. Christopher, do you like fully understand what that scene was about? Mm -hmm. I think that like the scholars have... Like, I'm not exactly sure who the scholars are, but, like, they are, like, revered elders of the country. Um, and they have, I think, if I understand correctly, like, they have sworn allegiance to the king and to the line of secession that currently says the crown prince, who was a bastard, is his successor. But, you know, all of that will be up for grabs when um, a new legitimate heir 
is born. Um, and then, so I think that that was like maybe a flashback scene because then we see like another scene with the scholars, the, um, the head maid, the prince's he own head maid, uh, has come to the scholars to report having found a dead body and something mysterious is going on at the palace. And like, she's risking her life to make this report to them like they are outside of like the army or police or other authority figures they are an authority of some kind of their own yeah they they were getting killed in the last episode no in the first episode the scholars were yeah wasn't there some problem with the scholars when they am i thinking of a whole other show uh I don't... Yeah, I should have watched the first episode again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have, too. Uh. Uh, yeah, I didn't really understand what was going on with the Covenant thing. I, You know what? I, th I, I think that that's just, like, um, about... Like, the Heiwan Cho clan wants to be able to sort of dissolve all of the um, existing allegiances of the line of secession that recognizes the illegitimate crown prince Got so, it. so that they can install the young Heiwan Cho clan queen's child the as the successor born. I think right yeah they need everyone yeah. to believe the king is still alive until that baby is born right right uh, you know what royalty is stupid anyway what yeah, you so mean royalty stupid <laughs> you heard me bitch <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, there's but there's going to be a royal baby right but why does it matter if the king's dead or not if the baby the baby is going to be born probably like yeah but okay so if the if the king is dead now they're, oh they're then it crown, would go to the crown, crown prince, prince and yeah. then it would all get f okay I got it it's still stupid but I get it yeah. right and so okay. even if the crown prince didn't want it, yeah, they would still have to, like, they'd still have to destroy him. They'd, they'd have to kill him. They'd have to eliminate him as a threat. Right. All right, so the crown prince and his buddy are in this really disgusting wet village, and it sounds gross when they walk, and they find this medicinal herb guy, and they're like, hey, where's Dr. Lee? What's going on? He's like, I, 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 I don't know. N nope, I don't know. And they're like, okay, but what's going on? Right, so they press him. And he's like, oh, well, you know what? Uh, there's a nurse from his infirmary that came through here. She was asking about the resurrection herb, but no such thing exists. And they're like, where did she go? Ridiculous. And he's like, to the frozen valley. So they ride, and then they hike, and they're in these icy caves, and they discover Sobi. That's I the mean, nurse from Juhan. Okay, here's my problem. <laughs> I, I feel like um, this show has the same issue that... Um, it, not an issue, but just me being an asshole, that um, our flag means death, where all of a sudden everywhere is where they need to be and find exactly what they need immediately. Like, they had to go to this faraway land, they're there immediately. When they found all those corpses, the army was there immediately. How did they even find the army? Like, I'm just being an asshole, but it's fine. You know, I... I think you have to um, assume that the Frozen Valley is just like a 20 minute walk. So if you're on horseback, it's really not a problem. It's surrounded by ice. How is it only 20 minutes away? And it's not that cold anywhere else. The way I always explain it in my mind is that the, the, the cuts between the different scenes aren't always simultaneously happening. Mm. Like mm -hmm. they took a few days to get up to the Frozen Valley and it all just kind of intersects at the... Uh, when they get back. Okay, yes. 
Yeah, that's like Usually. the magic of editing, you know? Like, time happens. You don't have to watch all of it. But uh, but actual physics and time are a problem for storytelling. Is sometimes you have to fudge it. Or yes, maybe it's I, just I like would... a microclimate thing where just like the next town over is a frozen valley. Shut up. <laughs> the issue with that is that these zombies come back to life at night. And if it took all this time to do all this stuff, oh, right. even just get this army, they would have known by now that these guys come back <laughs> to life at night. Yeah, but true. they did it. Yeah, this well, is all happening before the first night. But yeah. it was it was a known fact that freaks come out at night. Oh, you know what? You're right. I retract my statement. Thank you. You're welcome. <sighs> so they find the nurse. They encounter the nurse. And she's been excavating in this cave. She explains the plant, what the doctor said, and that none of those people are dead. And yeah. the prince is like, well, wait, 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 wait. Do they smell bad and growl? And she's like, yeah, dude. And he's like, oh, fuck, that's my dad. My dad's like one of those guys. And she's like, wait a second, the bodies have been moved? And like freaks whoa, 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 out. What? Yeah. Um, at the same time, back in the town, or back at the infirmary, Young Shin returns, horrified that the bodies have been moved and are gone. And they the, think he's the one that killed them all. Mm -hmm. Well, right? there's like yeah. people investigating the corpses and there's a guy who's like, oh, there's like bite marks on his face. It's like too small for a wolf or a bear. And our drunk magistrate guy is like, uh, could it have been a fox? And they're like, no, it was a human. These are human bite marks. What? And right yeah. then, Yang Shen barrels in and they're like, oh, that's the guy we've been looking for. Get him. And it's like an awesome fight scene. <laughs> Pow. And, and Young like, Shin no, is like, these people not are not dead. dead. They're going to come back to life. And he grabs a torch and he's trying to burn the bodies while avoiding soldiers. Trying to like nail him. But like they finally overpower him. There's too many yeah. of them. And then the, like, the village people are putting out the corpse fires. Which... So they like, don't like they don't like the idea of burning corpses. I guess it's yeah. like your soul doesn't go to heaven or something. Well, I mean, wh whatever it was, like they weren't happy about it. Was that like, is that a desecration? Yeah, they were crying. They were oh, so okay. upset that the bodies were on fire. That the dead, like rotten looking bodies were <laughs> remotely on fire. Not even the bodies, the mats touching the bodies were on fire. That's right. Because they got those nice bamboo mats on them. They did look nice. So back at the Frozen Valley, we learn yeah. that um, the nurse describes how the royal physician kept a detailed journal documenting the disease and the events at the palace. And uh, Prince Chang is like, okay, I believe you. You and Mu, Mu Yang uh, go deal with the dead bodies. I'm going to try to ride back and find that journal. Split up. Yeah. And uh, Prince Chang, he, he encounters those badass dudes from the Heiwan Cho clan. All alone. Yeah. He's. At the doctor's place? Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the, at the, yeah, at the abandoned doctor's place. Sorry. Did you watch this episode? I did. I'm just. I'm. I apologize if I'm oversimplifying it, but it's the only way I'm gonna get it. Because, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, yeah, but yeah. So yeah, they call him the prince, the main conspirator of this whole debacle. Yeah, they have like a legal order, like a, this parchment that calls for his arrest for conspiracy to overthrow the crown. Yeah, and he's like, okay, but is my dad dead, though? Right, and by the way, their breath in the scene mm -hmm. is visible. Yeah, I noticed like, that, too. Obviously, night is falling, and it's getting cold. Oh, shit. Yeah, so, like, the, 
the guy from the Heiwan Cho clan, like the main dude, he's like, the king is not dead. That's That's ridiculous. That's stupid. What are you, an idiot? Of course he's not dead. Not until his wife gives birth anyway. What? Yeah, and Prince Chang is like, he accuses him of grasping for power. And the Cho clan dude fires back. He calls him, like, a highborn, spoiled prick. Like, basically, fuck you, you little bitch. (laughs) They're both little bitches. Come on. Yeah, for sure. Like, swords are drawn. There's, like, this epic sword fight. The Mm -hmm. prince gets first blood, like, slashing the Cho Clan dude's cheek. That's right. Dude rips his hat off. Like, all along, we've had, like, epic fucking feudal era Korean hats on everyone. Yes. This dude is like, the hat's coming off. Like Oh, this, shit, the this hat's This fight just got off. real. Oh, fuck, dude. So, like, dude comes alive. He's got the crown prince on the floor. There's a sword in his face. When all of a what? sudden we you hear... Just... Okay, sorry, go ahead. What's up? I thought that you were saying something else. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, so yeah, the the Cho Clan dude like busts out. He's got like he's fucking pissed off, right? Like, I can't believe this fucking spoiled prick like nailed a point on me. He fucking cut my face. I'm gonna fucking kill him. Which is a win-win for him. Totally. Absolutely. Like, this is the best case scenario. I'm going to kill the prince. The prince is no longer an issue. He's got the prince on the ground with a sword in his face. There's a thumping noise all of a sudden. And there's a chest on the ground, like a giant steamer trunk. And the noise is coming from that. And the two guards that came with the Cho Clan dude go to inspect it. And then we cut back to the town. <gasps> yeah. The That's nurse funny. comes running up. Yeah. Because uh, the one guy is getting questioned because he's, like, trying to get everyone to get these damn corpses out of there. Right. That's Yong Shin. That's the Shin, soldier hunter you. guy. Who fed dead bodies to everybody. Mm-hmm. Who fed one dead body. <sighs> And uh, I forgot about that. And they're like, okay, they're alive. Okay, dude, whatever. And the nurse is like, no, they are alive. Get them out of here. No. Right. She totally vouches for him, but they don't fucking believe her either. They're like, okay, crazy people. You're going to go to jail. There's two crazy people now. Right. We see the sun (laughs) is almost down. One guy is like, hey, I think I just saw a body move. Like just a like what? a random dude in the crowd, just like huh? yeah, a little mat twitch. And yeah. then we get what? a flashback scene in the palace. Was that a flashback scene? I didn't realize it was supposed to be a flashback. Well, we get two why... scenes in the palace. One is a flashback, and one mm-hmm. is right now. So the first one is clearly a little. It's it's at least a little bit of a flashback. We see the Heiwan Cho clan leader, that's like the top advisor to the king, and the young pregnant queen watch as the king's body is being examined by the royal physician. And like the, the king's body looks like perfectly intact. The doctor declares that he's dead. And the Heiwan Cho clan leader, what is that guy's name? He says, that's ridiculous. The king is not dead. And then he says, do what you did three years ago. And so the doctor has to do what he's told. And then we see the present day, the effects of what the what the doctor's done. The doctor gave him the resurrection herb. Yeah. And we now see a completely zombified king in chains just growling like a mad dog he jumps up and gro- goes crazy and the Heiwan Cho clan leader is just like standing there within an inch of where the king can get to doesn't react at all because the dude's in chains and all he can do is growl and spit and he's gnarly 
Yeah, he's completely yeah. fucking... He's, he's the best, most zombie, cool, gross king that you could hope for. The best zombie king. And he's cruddy. <laughs> very cruddy. Yeah. Uh, Corroded. His skin's gotta, peeling. His eyes are all gross. He's just fucking disgusting. Cheers. So then we cut back to Dong Nai. It's night, and the bodies are moving. There's a dude who, like, goes to inspect, and he's sort of, like, poking at it with a stick. And the drunk magistrate guy is like, Ah, oh, stop being a coward! Just use your hands! <laughs> and then, like, the very first zombie that the dude uncovers is, like, a contortionist zombie that, like, straightens up. Like, I wish that I could do that move. Like, goes from yeah. on the ground to, like, arcing full standing. A guy like from the crowd that... runs up and it's like, my wife! And, like, goes to <laughs> embrace her. And then she and yeah. other zombies just fucking jump on him and feast on him. And then they all get up and it's <laughs> fucking bedlam. Right before they start feasting on him, he's like... Honey, what do we do now? <laughs> well, hold on. I'm going to answer that in just a second. <laughs> right. Do my actions. Right. Like, he comes up. He has recognized her, even though she's, like, a fucking corpse. <laughs> and she looks completely zombie, like, zombied out. Like, the grossest. The S grossest. Um, Her face is turned towards the camera. So as he's like, honey, what's what do we do? <laughs> She's like, <laughs> you know. I don't like that plan. Can we think of another one real quick where I don't get eaten? Thank you. So simultaneously while that's happening, we see that the nurse and the soldier are being thrown in prison cells. But Yang Shin, the, the soldier hunter dude, just like drop kicks his way out of it and like goes off running into the night. The human cannonball. Yeah, totally. <laughs> he seriously was, because he did that with every single surface, vertical surface in that scene. He just cannonballed his way through each and every one. It was great. He, said, he could have said, I'm juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Almost made you spit. <laughs> and that would have been the end of... My laptop. And <laughs> <laughs> Back at Dr. Lee's, they're examining the trunk some more. Right. Like the action of the fight between the prince and the Cho Clan dude is like momentarily arrested by the inspection of this trunk. And a corpse just kind of tumbles out of it, right? Yeah, they, they turn the trunk like over... And the zombie of the doctor emerges. And attacks oh, that the was the doctor? That was Dr. Lee? Yeah. Not Dr. Lee! Yeah. Oh. He was a very special zombie. <laughs> it's a very special episode. <laughs> like, the guard attacks him and sticks a sword straight through him, which does nothing. No. And he keeps going after other people. He bites the guard. Mm. The um that guard is now a zombie, and the Choklan dude kills him, but gets bitten, and he drops to the ground. The other guard just fucking takes off. He's like, "Fuck this, I'm out." Nope. Yeah. The. Cho Clan dude, now a zombie, gets up to attack the prince. Apparently, his mission hasn't changed in death. <laughs> Why would it? He comes running after the prince, and the prince runs away. And then he's like, you know what? Turns around, full decapitation with the sword. Gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's a real Highlander moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes outside, oh. and he sees the town where like the bodies had been taken to and the magistrate and everyone is all of that shit is just ablaze this show is so gorgeous right 
It is so pretty, and uh, especially that lake with all the dead bodies in it. Ah, uh, it yes. is like the underwater photography. Yeah. First of all, like the, there's fall leaves. It's a picturesque place to take a boat out. <laughs> Just a little boat ride. Yeah, I mean it's gorgeous, but then un- under under the water is fucking it's I think gorgeous. They're the, uh, they're the victims of the king, right? Um. Well, we don't know yet oh. what is going on oh. there. They might be the victims of the king. They might be. Like they might they be something at, else. Like they wake up at night and just wiggle around in the in the water. <laughs> I've got oh. to right. Because they're tied to stones, feet first, right. In bags. Right. They have some kind of aversion to burning bodies. <laughs> but yeah, water's fine yeah. because water gets rid of fire. Yeah, Dude, they should. You guys... uh, they should really just open their hearts to fire. Yeah, Not it's cleansing. Needs to get into <laughs> That's so true. Are you guys familiar with the game Ghost of Tsushima? Mm-mm. I don't know that. It's a. Uh, it's a it looks okay it looks exactly like this show it's about a japanese samurai and i haven't played the whole thing but it's gorgeous it's worth playing just to look at it's so beautiful and every shot of this show i've been like oh mm, that's exactly what it looks like that's it i'll check it out well actually i probably won't check it out but i would like to check it out just just know that it's pretty um that one thing that we haven't even really talked about just because we've been going through all of like the plot points and like the action is like yeah. it's it's so nice the way a lot of these scenes live in quiet moments. Mhm. You know like they they let things unfold naturally and quietly and the camera work like You know, it, it operates a little bit the way horror movies do, where you're like, uh oh, I think there's something coming from behind, but I don't know, and I'm like trapped in this, you know, like. It's, it's nice. A little, yeah, you get little clues where you're like, I I feel uneasy, and I'm not sure why, but it's really pretty, and it's like they build tension well without having it be too much like a horror movie. If that makes sense, I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, also, I don't know if you noticed when they got to the frozen valley and found the nurse, like the cave, or I'm not sure if it was the cave entrance or just like the part of the cave that she was in. There was like overhead, there was like a ribbit, like an ornate. Yeah, what was that? There was markings. There, there was a stone, piles of stones. There was a, some sacred mar- sacred uh, markings. Yeah. The location special cave. It was a special cave. Yeah, it's it's, it's not addressed at all. It's just, pl- it's just in the background. Right. She was looking for like the cure, right? The yeah, the, she wants the a, plant that's supposed to cure it. Well, yeah. it's the plant that causes it and then she wants I get assuming she wants to find a cure or at least prove that's what's going on. Yeah, I don't But why does she Okay. I mean, she when she's in the cave doing that, she's expecting all the zombies to be trapped in the in the village under the floorboards, right. and to be and when they wake up, they'll be trapped in there, and she's gonna do experiments on them uh, to try to find a cure using the plant. Yeah, Obviously. she's a woman of science of this age, and she feels sure. responsible. I mean, like the soldier, she feels responsible for the whole thing. Somewhat, she less so that the other guy, that human cannibal, <laughs> feels way more responsible. <laughs> <laughs> he came. You can see it, his his reaction. Is, yeah, he, he he's doing way too much work for someone. He should just uh, get out. Yeah, of town. right, <laughs> right. Because he caused this problem, he feels like he's got to fix it. It seems. I mean, I would assume that being put in jail would be the safest place in that little village. Yeah, but he's got to cannibal his way the fuck out. Yeah, I mean, if everyone in that village turns into a zombie, then having them be on the other side of a locked jail door is the best is the best scenario. But the fire's coming. Right. Ah, the fire. 
Don't want to be in a wooden jail when the fire comes. That is true. And the ground is just kindling at that point. Who's the Who's that one person who survived in jail in history? <laughs> uh, the the bomb. It was a prisoner in Japan, in what Nagasaki or a, oh really? One person that yeah it was in jail and survived. One person like for a, a military like a bad military dude. Oh it's, shit! It, I don't like know about that. He got, he got burnt. He got burnt up pretty good. We actually survived though. It's like the only survivor of the whole thing. Damn. Did he? Did he have a long life after? I don't think so. It's so interesting, like, um, people that, people that were, like, close, but not close enough to be, like, right in the blast. Some of them lived, like, long, like, completely long, normal lives. Other people that were, like, within the range of, like, the black rain fallout, you know, had, um, radiation poisoning. It's horrible. It was that one guy who was in both of them. Oh, right. right. Yeah, there was a guy who like what was literally at both and survived both. Yeah. Thank God I survived that. Glad I'm here now safe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's definitely the worst thing I'll ever see in my life. I think I'm going <laughs> to go God for a road that's trip. Over. <laughs> What's that bright light? Oh fuck. <laughs> That was chill, guys. I, my, that scene when the zombies come back in under the mats is my favorite. I think in the whole series is, is the best part of the. It was really. I was watching it again with a huge smile on my face. This is. Uh, it's yeah, so the, fantastic. The, the, the drunk dude's reactions to as the like the first murmurings of like something moved over there and they're like <laughs> no way no way no way no way yeah i think i saw then then they all see that one little twitch and it's the gasps and the gaping jaws it's beautiful wonderful that was a wonderfully built up scene and then the, of course the yeah that that backwards roll like a <laughs> gymnastic uh exorcist move to get up the cracking bone sound. Oh god, the sounds of all the cracking is so good. Oh, do you think? I wonder if the same actor who was like doing stunts on the tightrope mm. was the contortionist. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I think they have uh, quite a few uh, physical actors on the, the zombies the, do some pretty cool stuff. That's true. That's very true. We've got well, the human cannonball <laughs> is great in and of himself. Um, I wish that we could go back t to that party scene and just live in the party scene for like an extra five, ten, twenty minutes. Like, oh, part yeah. of me just wants to hang out and watch the guy with no shirt on be that guy. <laughs> He's going to put a lampshade on his head. I mean, it's gonna be totally. Dope. He is the lampshade guy. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like in an 80s movie, that's the dude who has a t-shirt that says party till you puke. <laughs> I'm sure he has some form of that right now or in that show. <laughs> He's the guy who it's sleeps with another guy by accident at the end of the party <laughs> <laughs> if i'm and you're uh -oh. <laughs> classic <laughs> all right so yeah so this episode ends with fucking great cliffhanger action the town's on fire. The nurse is in prison. The human cannonball is somewhere in the night. The prince has decapitated one of many people pursuing him. Um, Mu Yang is like... Hold up, hold up, hold up. Mm -hmm. The prince is not decapitated. No, the decapitated. prince decapitated. That's what he said. Oh, that is what he said? Yeah. I heard... Okay, sorry. I apologize. I heard it different. Wait, what did you hear me say? What did you think I said? I I thought you said the prince is decapitated. Go ahead. 
he uh the prince is not decapitated but he has decapitated one of his many pursuers but there's like an endless fucking ocean of them meanwhile back so at the palace the king is a zombie the queen could uh give birth at any moment there's all the court intrigue and now a whole city full of zombies on fire yeah <gasps> tonight <gasps> what <laughs> woo <laughs> <laughs> all right so that was our out point for <laughs> <That's great. laughs> and scene um thanks so much for joining us guys this has been all the time we have for today yeah and why don't you play that awesome outro 